Hello, today I will tell you about another feature of the retouch for me frequency separation plugin that you won't find in regular frequency separation actions. First, I will perform a standard frequency separation. Here, I have selected a separation into two frequencies and check the Make Layers option. As usual, I chose a radius so that the defects I want to have on the high frequency layer disappear from the low frequency layer. For example, I want to get rid of this hair. When the Make Layers option is enabled, these settings in the plugin do not affect the layers in Photoshop. So I can simply click Apply. Now I have separated the image into two frequencies, and the photo still looks unchanged. Let's say I start retouching the high frequency layer. I select the Clone Stamp tool, choose Current Layer, then hold down Alt and click on the area from which I will take texture. And now I can retouch the skin. You probably know how to do all of this. However, many have noticed that when retouching close to a high contrast edge, like here, it doesn't turn out as desired. Let's take a look at the layer separately. This is the low frequency layer, and this is the high frequency layer. This problem occurs because on the low frequency layer, the background and the face overlap each other because all the edges are blurred. This makes retouching close to high contrast edges quite challenging. To prevent such artifacts from appearing, I can also take samples close to the edge, but this is quite inconvenient. Let me redo the frequency separation. Now I will need these settings. So the problems with edges occur because Gaussian blur smooths not only the texture but also the edges themselves. To smooth only the texture while preserving the edges, various filters have been invented. Probably you have heard of the median filter in Photoshop that preserves the edges sharp while making the corners rounded. These two filters in Photoshop have no settings other than the radius. There is also Surface Blur Filter in Photoshop. Another name for such filters is Bilateral Filter. It's also here. So, Surface Blur in Photoshop has a threshold setting in addition to the radius. But, since it works slowly, I will demonstrate using the Gaussian Filter. In the Frequency Separation plugin, there is a threshold setting for all these filters. Let's see how it works. Now, the threshold is set to 100%, meaning that all edges are blurred. But if I start lowering the threshold, you can see that sharp edges start to appear, while fine details are still blurred. Here's the before, and here's the after. The same function is available for the median filter. Here's how it looks without a threshold. If I lower the threshold, fine details start to emerge. If I drop the threshold to zero, nothing is blurred. In other words, all high frequencies end up in the low frequency layer, and there's nothing left in the high frequency layer. Let's find a value where the desired edges are preserved, and I can click Apply. This is how the high frequency layer looks, and this is the low frequency layer. I'll try retouching after this frequency separation. I'll take a clone stamp with a uniform texture and try to draw a line along the edge. There are still some issues, but now they are much less pronounced. Let me undo everything again and perform a frequency separation with a threshold, but using a regular Gaussian blur. Let's have a look at the before and after. As you can see, only fine details disappear while all sharp edges remain intact. Let's apply the plugin and try retouching. I select the source for the clone stamp and try to draw a line along the edge. As you can see here, there are no problems at all. So now I can retouch without worrying about the edges. Let's also see what the layer with the texture looks like in different blur modes and compare them. This is what the high frequency layer looks like with a set threshold. And this is what it looks like without a threshold. You can see that when there's no threshold, there's a halo along the sharp edges. By lowering the threshold, I can eliminate this halo and retain only texture on the high frequency layer. In this case, when retouching, no edges will bother me.
This isn't the only useful feature of this function. Let's see how thresholds can help enhance detail. I'll raise the high frequencies. You can notice that along the sharp edge, there is a dark halo on one side and a light halo on the other. This is a common issue with all sharpening filters and is often referred to as halo or fringing. Lowering the threshold makes these contours disappear. Here's the before and here's the after. With these settings, I improve the detail while avoiding contour problems. Here's the before and after again. If we consider the three band mode, since it requires two blurs for three bands in the plugin, you can choose settings for each of these blurs. The right column represents the level of blur between high and mid frequencies, while the left column is for the blur between mid and low frequencies. As soon as I try to remove the mid frequencies from the image, artifacts immediately appear along sharp edges. Now I can eliminate these artifacts by adjusting the threshold. If I lower the threshold even further, other less contrasting details start to appear like eyebrows and nostrils. With these settings, I achieve quite good skin smoothing with minimal adjustments. I no longer have to remove sharp edges manually with a mask. I only need to draw a mask in the areas where I want to restore depth and dimension. Again, here's the before and here's the after. That's all for now. Thank you for your attention. I wish you all successful experiments with frequency separation.